Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode powered by Hayabusa is three common mistakes kickers make when fighting a good boxer. All right, in today's episode, we're talking about kick versus punch type of fighting. And we're gonna talk about the mistake the kicker makes when fighting the boxer. Those who know me know I like my kicks, my body kicks, my low kicks, my head kicks. But with that, a lot of people think that they can use their boxing to counter, which is a good effective strategy. If I'm fighting someone who's got better kicks than me, using my pressure, my power boxing, is gonna be more of my strategy to fight on the inside. But if I'm now kicking, which I'm known for, I have to be aware of certain things. And this is what we're gonna do, the mistakes people make when trying to kick fight. Now, when I'm kick fighting, right, I wanna use a lot of timing, all right? So if Diego throws his jab, I ideally hit the leg. He throws the kick, we time. He throws a hook, you know, I catch and I hit. But when doing drills, that sounds like it should work, but in reality, sometimes that's not okay. For example, if I throw a switch kick, but Diego really steps in this time, boom, right? It's not as realistic as the drill thought. So then you can get caught and get hurt once you try to implement it in your sparring or your fighting. So I'm going to break it down now so you don't make these mistakes when it comes to fight time. So the first thing we're going to talk about when throwing your kicks is understanding your head position, right? Your range and your hand position, all right? It's a lot, but this is our first point and you'll see it quick. If I'm in mid-range, I have to understand that this is where my opponent can crack me. So if I throw a switch kick, for example, and I'm in mid-range without knowing my hand position or my distance, that's where it becomes a big issue. So the first thing I need to understand is where am I before I kick? If I'm kicking on the outside and say I'm drawing Diego in here, right? I want to make sure my position is long because I know he's going to step in and hit me. So I might, when he throws it, boom, I use more of a lean back left kick, right? If I just stay here and I keep my body straight, right, as I kick, he can still almost touch me. Now watch the range. Again, he tries to even step in. I can still hit and stay extra long and not get hit, right? Say he throws the jab. Same thing. I can stay long. So part of staying long is understanding that I'm gonna draw him in. You still see I bring hand control out, right? So understanding that range is the most important. If I'm sitting here and I throw a low kick, boom, he hits me. Say he throws a right cross now, boom, he hits me. Doesn't make any sense. I'm either gonna be in here and be safe or I'm gonna pull him long and throw my kick. I'm not gonna sit in mid-range. If I am gonna throw them in mid-range, this is where hand position becomes important. So say he throws a jab, I come here and he throws a cross. Boom, my hands are here. So now he throws a little kick, jab, cross. Boom, I'm here. I have something there to protect me. I didn't move my head. I couldn't manage distance. So the next thing that has to happen is your hand position. So even sometimes when I kick, I'm gonna control the hands at the same time. I'll stay here. I'll come here. I'll use hand pins, okay? I'll use longer style effective because I wanna pin the hands to be able to throw my kicks defensively, okay? So that's point one, understanding range, right? Long head position further back. If I'm throwing on the inside, I might stay head more forward, right? If I'm in mid range and I do the lean back, right? Not enough, I'm still gonna get touched. I have to make sure my head is forward and if I do hit, I'm staying nice and strong and I can still block the punches. Okay, so let's move to point two. Now it's the timing you throw them. We've got our range, we've got our hand position, we've got our head position. Now it's the timing, the transition we're gonna hit at. So the easiest one is I like is the draw attack, right? It keeps me long. So I'm staying here, I'm pulling him in and he throws. I'm keeping myself long and I'm keep fighting on the outside. One of the most effective ways. Now. When I'm fighting outside long, this is a little bonus tip for you for my kick fighters, you don't always want to throw round attacks when you're throwing against a boxer. If I throw only round attacks, my center becomes open for him to attack. So if I throw a round kick, round kick, round kick, he's able to step in. So what I need to do now as the kicker, I need to establish a front kick as well. So I, boom, I front kick him. Now from this position, he doesn't know if a front kick or round kick, and then I'll go round kick. Then I'll mix in a front kick, and then I go back round. 
So by establishing my front kick, it's going to keep him from wanting to come in. So I'm alternating between round kicks, levels, and front kicks. So that's using the draw attack. My personal favorite of the transitions is creating an exit attack. So what I'll do is I'll high pressure myself on the inside. I don't want to box with him, right? He has the better boxing. So say he boxes and I get inside and I got myself in here, right? From this position, right, he's going to panic. He's going to start to exit. As he exits, I chop the leg. Or even better, my ideal favorite is he exits, I go to the head kick. Right? Uh, create an exit attack, and then that's what's going to help me transition. So my two options are, one, the draw attack, staying long. Even when I'm drawing, I'm creating angles, right? I'm coming offline just to avoid any straight power center line attacking. Or I control the hands, come inside, and I create an exit attack. So I've shut down the boxing on the enter, and I'm pulling him outside to get him to throw to open himself to be able to attack. The third one, which is the most important, is understanding that you have to build an exit after your kicks, right? You did all that work on getting inside, getting outside, but if you throw a kick, right? Say I shell Diego up, he's here. I kick, and then I fall here, boom, and then he comes back. I'm in a neutral stance after a kick, I'm on my heels, I'm asking to get knocked out. So after your kick, you have to build a fast exit, okay? Let me quickly tell you what the two fastest ones are for you. When I throw my rear kick, okay? Say I throw to the body, I kick, and I don't wanna bring my leg back round and slow. My kick comes round, my foot comes back straight, fast and out, okay? I need to step beyond where my foot started from. So my foot started on this line, okay? I heavy kick round, I pull straight, and back. See how much I was able to move. I was able to come back beyond that line I started with, okay? So I hit round, boom, foot slides out. I created an exit, so I was able to attack and avoid the counter shot. Now when it comes to my left kick, there's two options you could do, and it depends how fast they are, okay? So I'm gonna give you the faster way that exits more of a distance. So I switch kick here, boom, I back step, back step. I was able to travel such a long distance that they were able to kind of have to come in a little bit more. Maybe I'm in MMA and they might wanna shoot after, I might stay here, right? I want that little bit of extra exit. The other way, which is a little bit more, less of a distance, less faster exit, this is more my personal favorite. I'll switch kick here, step down, and then slide out. So switch kick here, come back down, and slide out. Why I like this one in particular is if after my switch kick, I'm turning here, there's a moment where I'm open in a square stance where if they pressure me, they can get it. But if I switch kick from here, and step back, I've always had my wedge in front of my face, right? So say Diego throws a hard one too, look, I can stay here and keep defensive the entire time. So I'm creating a wedge between their punch and my face, and I keep my elbow up. So one, see, I can block, get under that kick, and be safe. All right, so I hope you understand what I taught today because these three points are very important, all right? Understanding your distance management, your hand position, head leaning forward versus forward depends on the range. Where are your hands while you're throwing them? You have to be aware of all those things. You also need to understand the transition. Are you drawing them in on angles? Are you pushing them off and attacking? Understanding the push off versus the draw attack. And the last point I made sure to talk about is building the exit, all right? Make sure you get out and you get fast, okay? And then reset and then do it again. Make sure you like and subscribe to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Make sure you support the channel by supporting our sponsors by going to Hayabusa Fight and Perfect Sports Nutrition, all linked in the description below. And last but not least, we have bazookatraining.com, online training and curriculum taught by me, brand new videos every single Monday, home workouts. We have bag workouts, sparring drills, tutorials, brand new videos every week, plus an archive library of probably over 400 videos now for you to learn. All right, we'll see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. I'm Bazooka Joe Veltolini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach Bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. 
The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section, where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions, and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.